afternoon to everyone. My name is Hong Kim Hui. The topic that we are going to discuss today is intelligence and cognitive functioning. In this topic, we will describe how scientists define and measuring intelligence, heredity and environment contribute to intelligence, aging process on cognitive functioning, and compare autism ADHD. Firstly, let us look at what is intelligence. According to Stenberg, intelligence is the capacity to learn from experience using metacognitive process to enhance learning and the ability to adapt to the surrounding environment and it's normally expressed as the intelligent quotient which is IQ. IQ also related to job performance, income, social economic level and negatively to juvenile delinquency. How we measure intelligence? One of the examples of intelligence test is Raven progressive matrices, a widely used intelligence test in many research and applied settings. In each item, one is asked to find the missing parts in series. One of the examples is colored progressive matrices, which for, is for younger children and special group, and standard progressive matrices of average 6 to 80 years old and advanced progressive matrices for above average adolescents and adults. The graph diagram shows the distribution of IQ score in the population. From what we can see is most people are near the average, which is relatively few people either the extreme low or extreme high intelligence. Only 2% of the population score above 130 points or below 70 points. Critics believe that I, the scores on traditional intelligence tests are closely related to academic performance and to higher social economic levels. The test over emphasize on the verbal ability, education and western culture. They claim that true intelligence is much more than what, what the test measure. Stenberg claims that intelligence is a cultural invention to account for the fact that some people are able to succeed in their environment better than others. What is the structure of intelligence? Another controversy that is critical to biological understanding of intelligence is whether intelligence is a single capability or a collection of several independent abilities. Intelligent theories tend to fall into one of the two groups, which is lumpers and splitters. Lumpers claim that the intelligence is a single unitary capability, which is usually called the journal factor. And splitter, by contrast, hold the intelligence is made out of several mental abilities that are independent of each other. One of the theories of the lumpers is theory of general intelligence by Charles Spearman. He predicted the idea of general intelligence and it could predict our outcomes in varied academic areas. Studies have shown that those who score in one area like verbal intelligence also, also tend to score higher in other areas such as partial reasoning. And the problem is the idea was controversial and human abilities are diverse. Do that one single factor could account all of them? They point out that a person who is high in one cognitive skills is usually high in others, so they believe that a measure of G is adequate by itself to describe a person's intellectual ability. The second theory is theory of primary, primary mental abilities by Thompson. This theory is different with the general intelligence. They claim that they have seven factors of intelligence word fluency, verbal comprehension, spatial reasoning, perceptual speed, numerical ability, inductive reasoning, and memory. And these factors of intelligence, they are independent of each other, which means that someone with good inductive reasoning may be not having high verbal comprehension. These theories point to cases of brain damage in which one capability is impaired without affecting others. Therefore, they are more interested in scores on student subtests of standard 
IQ test or score from the test specific cognitive abilities. They may agree that there is the general intelligence, but they give more emphasis on to separate the abilities and to difference among them in an individual. That's all from me. Thank you everyone and I will pass to the next presenter. Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Taufik Kidayat Ben Waidin. I will now proceed the presentation with the topic Biological Origins of Intelligence. From J. Martin Clausher, Intelligence is derived from two words, inter and ledger. Inter meaning between and ledger meaning to choose. An intelligent person, therefore, is one who has learned to choose between. He knows that good is better than evil, that confidence should supersede fear, that love is superior to hate, that gentleness is better than cruelty, forbearance than intolerance, compassion than arrogance, and that truth has more virtue than ignorance. Here is the table of contents of my point. The first is brief history of intelligence. Next, I will continue the presentation about how psychologists define intelligence. Here is the brief history of intelligence. The term intelligence quotient or IQ was first coined in the early of 20th century by a German psychologist named William Stern. Psychologist Alfred Binet developed the very first intelligence test to help the French government identify school children who needed extra academic assistance. Binet was the first to introduce the concept of mental age or a set of abilities that children of a certain age possess. Since that time, intelligence testing has emerged as a widely used tool that has led to develop many other tests of skill and aptitude. However, it continues to spur debate and controversy over the use of such testing. Cultural biases that may be involved, influences on intelligence, and even the very way we define intelligence. Intelligence involves some different mental abilities including logic, reasoning, problem solving, and planning. While the subject of intelligence is one of the largest and most heavily researched, it is also one of the topics that generate the greatest controversy. While psychologists often disagree about the definition and causes of intelligence, research on intelligence plays a significant role in many areas. These areas include decisions regarding how much funding should be given to educational programs, the use of testing to screen job applicants, and the use of testing to identify children who need additional academic help. Now we move on how psychologists define intelligence. Here I have three points to be highlighted. They are ability to learn, ability to recognize problems, and ability to solve problems. For instance, in the case when we are solving a puzzle. At first, we will take a quick look at the questions. From there, we will learn. Then, after recognizing problems, we will develop a general idea regarding the theme of the problem. Finally, select the data that is giving us some concrete information out of the total information given. Also, select the data which helps in ruling out certain possibilities. Then, the puzzle is solved. At various points throughout recent history, researchers have proposed some different definitions of intelligence. While these definitions can vary considerably from one theorist to the next, current conceptualizations tend to suggest that intelligence is the ability to learn from experience recognize problems and solve problems. Learns from experience 
means that the exquisitions, retention and the use of knowledge is an important component of intelligence. Recognize problems is to put knowledge to use. People must be able to identify possible problems in the environment that need to be addressed. And the last one, solving problems. People must then be able to take what they have learned to come up with a useful solution to a problem they have noticed in the world around them. Now, let's have a closer look on that three main highlighted points. First of all is learn from experience. According to experiential learning theory, we learn through a learning cycle. Our experience serves a basis for reflection. From reflections, we develop ideas about the world. We then test the ideas to see if they are true. And finally, we have new experience. Great learning experience adds value to the learner. Learners will have the ability to understand something that could not be done before, easy to use, and well made. The whole experience should feel purposely and prioritize the needs of the learners. The second one is on recognized problem. Problems can be thought of as the difference between the actual situation and the desired situation. This means that in order to identify problem, the team must know where it is intended and have a clear understanding of where the problem is currently related to the perceived problem. In this step, it is important to clearly explain and document what we consider to be the problem. This helps provide a starting point for solving the problem. Explaining this problem also ensures that any confusion about the problem is identified and resolved. Finally, about solve problem. Problem solving gives us a mechanism to identify these things, find out why they are broken and determine actions to fix them. Problem solving develops mathematical power. This gives learners the tools to apply our mathematical knowledge to solve hypothetical and real world problems. Troubleshooting is a lot of fun. This allows students to work at their own pace and make decisions about how we explore problems. I think that is all from me and now we will proceed the presentation with the next presenter. Thank you. Hello and hi everyone. My name is Siti Mansara Binti Muhammad Abdul Ghani and I will present about hereditary and environment. So, is someone's intelligence is heritable or is it affected by the environment or both? So, let's see. We will discuss about heritability of intelligence, the genetic controversy, environmental effects, and enhancing intelligence and cognitive performance in this subtopic. So, according to TJ Bouchard and Matthew 1981 in our textbooks, the closer we related to someone, the more similar our IQ. For example, we our IQ will similar with our father, mother grandfather or anyone who is blood related with us so even separated from from birth the correlation is still there so uh, for identical twin iq they are more similar than fraternal twin iq so the more we age the relative influence of heredity increases genetic influences working memory processing speed and the reaction time when making choice uh, but this heritability um, of general intelligence only for general intelligence is higher than heritability of specific intelligence like spatial verbal or emotional so 
locating the specific gene which gene uh, play important parts in IQ so there are two genes that underwent accelerated evolution ASPM and PACAP so ASPM is abnormal spindelite microcephaly associated protein gene is the major role in determining brain size PACAP pituitary adenylate adenylate cyclase activating polypeptide precursor gene uh, playing role in neurogenesis and neural signaling and it also may have contributed to human cognitive abilities formation like decision making or uh, memorizing like that so researchers took initiative to combine the genetic data and brain scanning to locate these genes that responsible in structure, structural foundations of intelligence as these two genes are so small so it tend to be missed factors that in that affect intelligence the brain size the more big your brain so the IQ will be higher the cortical thickness, uh, the thicker the cortical, the higher the IQ, and also have multiple multiple variation of genes that related to structural integrity of major brain pathways. So the second one is the genetic controversy. Critics do not support that intelligence is inborn and unchangeable so the counter argument that these um these researchers that support genetic uh, effect in uh, genetic uh intelli effect intelligence is genes do not fix behavior or intelligence it set a range of its development not that not that uh, our father is IQ heavy have IQ with one four six then the children is one four six not like that it just said a range of its development so uh, the critics also say that world can change someone's intelligence um, because it is stimulating in every side and angle fill with information and change in education so we will discuss m more about this in environmental effects research also found that only through genetic relationship influence IQ similarity between twins not the same parents perception same rearing and same environment this is the pro genetic theory genetic theory of intelligence um, opinion uh, the last one the last controversy is different ethnics have different level of intelligence due to heredity and environment IQ differences are consistent around the world IQ gaps correspond with brain size um so uh, from the research has found that asian people has bigger brain than uh african people it is because of um it is because of evolution and uh natural selection so iq gaps correspond with brain size it means that the more the bigger your brain size the higher your IQ so the third one is environmental effects to intelligence intelligence is the product of genes and plus environment it it is affected by both genes and environment example um, socio-economic level it is moderately related because uh, in there are research that found 
if your socioeconomic level is high then uh, the then the uh, children will also have higher level IQ but if not then it will uh, they will have lower IQ level but this is not the main socioeconomic is not the main uh, factor of that affect IQ level other than that parental education also moderately related and adoption um it it can it can change the children um IQ level because they because they grow they grow in entirely different environment okay so next one is prenatal exposure to pesticides this is the most determined environmental effect that researcher has found according to m e bouchet etc uh, 2011 High level of organophosphate pesticide residue resulted average 7.0 lower IQ level than the low level of exposure. And this, uh, this exposure has caused the, the working memory, processing speed, verbal comprehension and perceptual reasoning drop drastically. The second one is infectious disease. So, because of this infectious disease, um, the IQ level of the children will drop. Because of what? The energy for their brain development is used up to fight the disease. And it is um, correlated with Flynn effect. If we have better health, so IQ increases. If we not, so the IQ will drop. Okay. And the last one is enhancing intelligence and cognitive performance. There are two research about this. The first one is a research to 50 years old and above. They are they are they are given extensive training plus various cognitive tasks also they have to consume uh, they have to consume cocoa flavonols uh, for their nutrient extra nutrient uh, for their supplement so the study results after 3 months they show significant improvement on cognition okay so the second research about stunted children age 9 to 24 months uh, this research has show importance of early stimulation they uh, the psychologists that uh, visited them provide books and toys to them play them uh, uh, play with them for uh, every week and their mothers are taught better communication with their children for the study results compared to non-standard control children their iqs their grades all um increase and the depression level and also f um also fights with others uh, drop the the level drop okay the level decrease the summary of the subtopics is intelligence is influenced by both heredity and environment the IQ increasing over the year because of better life and environment based on Flynn effect Intelligence and cognitive can be enhanced by doing tasks and activities related to uh, intelligence and cognitive uh, and cognition. 
uh, and also flavonous consumption. Early stimulation is important for children's intelligence and cognitive development. So that's all from me. I will pass to next presenter, Azmi. Thank you.